It was a majority yeah. of the audience. That was it in was May, the NRC's right? Scheduled a hearing, which they do every what six it's months. It's a dog and pony thing. show. For people to yeah, dog and pony show for people to come and ask them questions. And so but this action took place when when they you know challenged yeah. people they have to protesting. Do the rest they of the to. audience joined. They have to have these yearly things, but you know it was over and over again. They say the same stupid things, and the, the audience was really very much on our side. Well, they were, it's a very sophisticated audience, so <laughs> people were just waiting for the opportunity because we know, I don't think there's anybody in the audience who is a part of, of the anti-nuke movement mm -hmm. who doesn't know that this is, the NRC is a sham. I would like to ask one question, is it referring to the, to the slideshow I was one, uh, we were watching, thank you very much. Um, it's like you, you seem to do this since seven years. You were arrested twenty times. Twi We've 20 done times, twenty uh, actions that resulted and, in arrest. Uh, well, still the plants uh, is running. What, what keeps you running and going on? Well, I think each of us may have our own answer. I'm going to yeah. try to give you a, a general answer, and the others will yeah. agree or disagree with yeah. it. In nonviolent civil resistance in the United States, in the tradition of Gandhi and uh, Martin Luther King, the witness is what's important. And although we believe that we shut the plant down every time we go there, and we do, you know, we block the entrance, and then until they move us, the plant is shut down, yeah. if you'll follow that. Um, so that's our goal for the, for the short term is to go there and witness for a transformation, for a change of heart. That's what civil resistance is about, for a change of heart. Publicity is ambient. We're, we're delighted you're here. We could not be more thrilled that you're here. But publicity is ambient. Coverage is ambient. The goal is to witness for the change of heart. One of them is uh, for the future of my grandchildren. I have grandchildren, and I, uh, I really think that we are fighting uh, something extremely dangerous. It's a matter of life and death, and uh, it's not uh, apparent to most people, but it's apparent to us that we are dealing with something extremely uh, volatile. And there's no reason why this uh, this plant should be here. Uh, we, the, Vermont itself, the state of Vermont, doesn't even buy any more power for them. Uh, we're trying to get Massachusetts not to buy any power. That's another whole issue. But um, my family lives in Vermont, and I, I uh, it's, that's a small reason, but the bigger reason is uh, it's our future. It's our future that's at stake. If that place blows, uh, uh, we all of us live within the um, evacuation zone. That's 50 and, miles, right? Yeah. 50, and we all live there. 50, 50. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, it's not just that we're thinking about ourselves, we're thinking about all the people we know and love. And, um, and but what's more, it, what gets me is the, uh, the way that energy lies. They just out and out lie, the company that owns it. And uh, it's just... Uh, Disgusting in a way. It's it's disgusting that uh, that they can put this out to the public, and as Marsha says, it's all because they're trying to make a buck. But uh, they have a responsibility as a corporation to tell us the truth, and they don't. Right now, what they're doing is wrong. It's dangerous. It risks everyone's lives. And you're right, they lie. And I, I'm not going to just sit there and let that go. I'm going to do whatever I can about that. I, I very much would echo what my, my three other shut it downers have said. We live downwind and downriver from this strontium 90 producer, from the tritium producer. Um, I too have grandchildren who live in the same town Priscilla does. And uh, so when, when we talk about our grandchildren, it, it certainly resonates. I think the other, the other thing about it that really compels me again and again is, uh, is that if we don't keep saying it, I'll, I'll forget. That 
that there's so much going on in our world that it's so easy just to be preoccupied with other things. And, and we, we are so aware that we cannot deal with this technology that we do not have a, a plan for the waste. And even in today's paper, there was an article about that, uh, that the, uh, there's, there's a, a possibility of a hold on all of our nuclear power plants getting re-licensed because somebody even in the federal government, and I, I didn't quite follow. NRC. The NRC has determined that we cannot, we can't store it. So there's a question of do you store it on site? I mean, this is that this is that genie out of the bottle. This this nuclear stuff, and we can't put it back in. And you know, so we can love a, a, our individual family members or this planet. Um, you drove up and down our valley. We live on one of the most beautiful places on this planet, and uh, and the thought of it being uninhabitable is, drives me to the brink. Well, you know, the other thing, too, is the one way of recycling it is through nuclear weapons. And we're doing that over and over and over again. And we're spreading all of this all over the land. The children in Gaza are playing with it. The children, you know, all over the world are playing with our nuclear weapons. Priscilla is also code pink. Uh, okay. Code pink, women for peace. Okay, thank you. I Sorry. think we have a chapter in Germany. And you in Berlin, I think. And and it can't be it can't be that way. I would be interested in a kind of uh, perspective uh, on the basis of the status quo legally. What we learned so far is that um, there is this license extension. Yeah. It's, it's valid until further notice. It's twenty years. No, twenty yeah. years. <coughs> to further notice in the sense of that uh, there's this judge thing on the federal level and now it's getting higher. Probably people say that it's going to the Supreme Court in the end. This fight between Speculatively. Speculatively. Yeah. Between, between the Vermont state legislation and so on. Uh, this so it's now years. an appeal in New York City, the, yeah, the yeah, next yeah. level of appeal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this could take years and years and years. Um, on the other hand, there was Fukushima. It's the same, the same technique. Yes, the um, same kind of a reactor. GE you, boiling water reactor, yeah. Mark One. Do same, you feel? Same. Do you feel here in the besides your group? Do you feel growing concern, growing protest in the sense of what is this? There was Fukushima. They got the extension. Uh, there's some thing going on on the courts, but nothing really happens. Politics, the legislative side can say we did everything. Uh, is there more concern, or are people? getting kind of wary and, and uh, annoyed in the sense of, oh, come on, let me alone with that. Uh, let no. me t take it and then I'll do the same as before, if you don't mind. No. Um, I think it's a mixed situation. I think there are many people getting more concerned. Uh, we, le we have recently been leafleting in Brattleboro on the same day that we do an action. And this last time, uh, was the first time that we encountered people arguing with us about the fact that Vermont Yankee isn't safe, that it's dangerous. In the past, we would have people refuse to take a leaflet. But this time, there were people really actively saying, you know, it's a wonderful thing, and, and uh, it, it makes money for them yeah. and for the state, and it's really not a problem, and, and you guys are just as fra afraid. Now, we used to encounter that if we went to an NRC hearing, but we didn't encounter it much on the street. So our sense the other day was that about 5% of the folks we approached were actively in favor of Vermont Yankee, and maybe 60% of the people we approached were actively opposed to Vermont Yankee, and the other 35% we couldn't read. So one of us, that's Marianne, speculates, one of the women speculates, that because of the court actions, it's now OK to speak up in favor of Vermont Yankee. But as we were building to march, she thinks, when, when it was supposed to shut down, uh, as we were building to march, there was a real sense and a hope that it would shut down. But now, th it's very amorphous what's going to happen next. We don't know what's going to mm -hmm. happen next. and so. 
<clears throat> the, the direct answer to your question is, there was a very large civil disobedience on uh, March 22nd. You may know about that. Okay. The Sage 22nd. The plant was supposed to close on the 21st, and on the 22nd, 136 people of 1,200 demonstrators were arrested at Entergy headquarters in a highly choreographed and very successful, beautiful action. And the coordinators of that action are the Sage Alliance, and perhaps you've spoken with them, but surely you must speak with, uh, I'll give you the names of people at Sage yeah. uh, at, before you leave. So they are major organizers of ongoing, constant uh, demonstrations, most of them, most of them, not leading to civil resistance. The Shut It Down Affinity Group, these women, uh, all of us who are in this, are dedicated to civil resistance. So that's a slightly different twist. The Sage Alliance is also dedicated to civil resistance, <clears throat> and there are 23 affinity groups involved in the Sage Alliance. And actually, Paki is very closely involved with the Sage Alliance because of many reasons, and she can tell you about some of the upcoming actions. Separately, it seems that, yes, maybe there's a, a, a it's confusion in a certain way. We, we don't know what, we know what to do next because we're dedicated to civil resistance. It's hard for people to know where to put the pressure. And the lawsuit has seemed to be a very um, useful tool for uh, this movement to shut down Vermont Yankee for the last 10 years maybe. It's useful in the sense that it raises issues in a legal way that bring attention to the public. And then there are a couple of other organizations, the um, Citizens Awareness Network, the Vermont Yankee Decommissioning Alliance, uh, the New England Coalition, which brought the suit that Epaki was telling you about the resolution mm -hmm. of earlier. Those agencies are constantly going door to door, making phone calls, and keeping, keeping this issue in front of the populace of Vermont. Some of us, I'll speak for myself now, some of us cannot understand why there is not a wider civil resistance movement like you have. But that's me. I'm not speaking for the whole yeah. Shut It Down Affinity group. I'm speaking for myself when I say that. And I think, you know, Priscilla and Ruth and Paki have different perspectives. The numbers, 1,500 At that demo. participants and around 140 were participating in that civil resistance thing. Uh, yes. Is yes. That, was that the biggest demonstration yes. so far? Yes. In the, whole, in, the whole, in the whole year? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And that, my opinion is, it will be the biggest demonstration, unless this flotilla gets bigger, but I doubt it. And it, it's mystifying. That's, again, my own thought. Well, and I would just like to add, I talk about this with my friends and so forth. I think that people just, the general public, does not have any real concept about this, uh, how dangerous it all is, and uh, how uh, badly we are being threatened. Uh, so uh, we just have to keep on keeping on, that's all. And uh, people don't want to hear about it, uh, but we just continue to put it in their faces. And one of the things that we've been giving out uh, at our latest uh, giving out pamphlets in Brattleboro and so forth is a, a short paper, maybe you'll have one of them, telling about the physical uh, results already of, of the uh, I'll get one. It, how many, 27% of the workers in the power plant uh, are threatened with cancer. And leukemia is in the whole area around this. And you can't believe it. The nuclear power plant is almost right across the street from a school in Vernon, Vermont, their local public school. If you, you can walk, you can walk across the street and see it. So uh, we we need to make people more conscious, and that's why we keep going, keep on. Because I think there's a pool of uh, negative thoughts about nuclear energy, but it needs to be developed and um, made much more conscious. We need a grassroots movement, and I think we're working on that, but people are lazy, they don't want to hear about it. If you, speaking in general terms, have had the feeling that after Fukushima, this, um, this attitude of the people towards nuclear energy 
did change, or was it just a, a hype in the media uh, keeping this thing up for one week and then everything went back into an, a slumber? We just, we just had a very interesting uh, a book uh, author. She wrote a book called Devil's Tango, How I Learned the Fukushima Step by Step. It's an excellent book. And she did research on what really happened to Fukushima. Mm -hmm. And she had been in this area just this past week mm -hmm. and talking about her book and, and selling the book and signing it. And uh, I think if that book gets around, it will make After a difference. Fukushima, uh, created such a strong um, <laughs> movement that the government was was forced to change the strategy. And where do you see the difference? Why here in the United States? You know, the nuclear movement started here. We dropped we the first the we dropped the first bombs on Hiroshima, and Nagasaki, and during the Manhattan Project, which is the how the bomb was developed in order to. Uh, had Germany off during the Second War and had Japan off during the Second War. It was always secret. It was always secret and it was always clandestine and the truth was always fuzzed. So when you, when you have leaflets for the pe peaceful atom in the 1950s in the United States, I've actually had them here in the antique shop, the real leaflets. They're telling us how safe it is. You know that people used to, I think in Slovakia, go bathing in the Radium Springs. It was, it was uh, not taken seriously, the danger. And here in the United States, uh, it, it's patriotic to believe that nuclear power is a fine uh, answer to things. It's, it's part of who we are. We, we are the originators of of nuclear power and nuclear weapons. It's, it's part of our culture. Secondly, and, and this is a not such a factual observation, this is more of a personal observation based on, uh, you know, traveling and having exchange students and friends of my kids and so on. <clears throat> in general in the United States, we tend not to be so very deliberative. We tend, we tend not to hear the news stop and think about what we just heard and weigh it and mull it over. So things often here become, anal and I'm oversimplifying, analogous to maybe a, a sporting event. So if we had won by shutting down Vermont Yankee, I think that we would have been like a basketball team mm -hmm. that, that just scored a lot of points, and so that would have been a great thing. But if we lost by not shutting down Vermont Yankee, well, that's, that's not the side you want to be on. Now, that's not very complimentary to us here in the United States. I don't intend it to be very complimentary, and that's my opinion. Yeah, I think we are a very adolescent nation. I'm sorry to say this, but it is true, and I have traveled quite a bit. And uh, it, it's, it, we're just teenagers in, in, in many regards, and uh, we just don't have a, a sophisticated ability to an analyze the news. We want to be entertained. It's bread and circuses. And um, our government uh, doesn't help very much. I, I mean, we don't hear from our government anything about the dangers of nuclear energy. And here is uh, our president saying we've got to subsidize nuclear energy. That's disgusting. But he, one of his largest funders is the Exelon Corporation. So Mr. Obama is a, a lovely man. He's, he's a fighting the good fight, but he's not fighting it about nuclear power because his support comes from the very industry that we want to shut down. Crystal. <laughs> so I would agree with a lot of what you said. And I think that, you know, that we believe in this mythology about our country, about who we are and why we act and what we do. So everything we do here is right and just. And so we don't have to think about that because we are better and better than anyone else and whatever our government says is what's but right and just, just so we just don't have to think a, about as it. As a foreigner, uh, maybe I may ask the question, could you be, could you continue being right and just and the greatest people on earth yeah. if you would get rid of nuclear power. No, we're not the greatest people on earth. You know, that's the problem. That's no, I, I mean, we, I was we, just... Th uh, we think we're the yeah. greatest people on earth, nope. but, but if we get rid of nuclear power, there's plenty of other things we're not doing right. Right. 
Okay. Yes, we are the empire. You had your chance, and you didn't do it in the 40s. No, I'm happy That's we right. didn't do it. Yes. Oh, yeah. We're so. glad you didn't, and we're sorry we did. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, that's the fact of the matter. This is the empire. When our presidents and, and when our politicians say, what we do in Guantanamo is not torture because we, we do we're it. doing it and we don't torture. You know, it goes back to you know, the, the whole question of, of the undereducation of the American people. We don't teach our children to be critical thinkers. And you know, we're a bunch of radical old ladies. And, and so we're, we're out there on the left with these opinions. Uh, among us, uh, there are college teachers, social workers, the women who, who get arrested at Vermont Yankee are all people who have worked with people pretty much all their lives in some professional capacity. Uh, many of them have graduate degrees. Many of them have PhDs. Many of them are social workers. Uh, Taki and Priscilla are part of a, a group called Social Workers for Peace and Justice in, in the Valley. And Northampton, all, all through the history of the United States, has been a, a generative place for the uh, action that is about the right thing. So uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is you won't find so many people, I don't think, who are as easy going about saying these things in the United States. If you find more, we'd like to know. I would just like to add one more thing, too, and that is uh, I think we have a, a, in our group a strong sense of camaraderie and, you know, that keeps going. Uh, you ask what keeps us going, you ask. And I think we, ha we can't underestimate that. We're all people who have been activists for many, many years on many different causes, not just this one. And this is just one of my many causes. I consider myself a professional actor. But it's because we have this group that meets together. We meet together regularly ahead of time. Uh, we have a potluck supper. We talk about the action, what's going to happen, how we're going to do it. And then we go to the Brattleboro Library we, the day of the event, and we, we talk about exactly what we're going to do and who's going to do what. And then we leave, and then we go and do the thing. But it's a very important thing that we all are together in this thing. That's what I, I think. I'm a fairly recent uh, joiner of the group. You know, I've been up, what, two, three years? Anyway, but I feel very much a part of it. Can I just say one thing that I've thought about as we were talking is that I just think it's important to say that our government has agreed with Japan that they would not release any information about um, the radiation in Japan at this time. So what does that tell us? Why wouldn't they be this as that information? I was actually uh, to ask you, because we had some other um, uh, discussions the other day and, and the morning, uh, and I haven't got a clue until now. Uh, from a German European perspective, uh, after this thing happened, uh, it would have been very likely that in that town, where it happened, with the company who owns it, with the, with the, in that case, the commission, the regulatory commission, there would have been a deep investigation. Uh, could that, what happened there, happen here because it's the same machine? Yes, right. Uh, and after the analysis, it would have come out, okay, we have mm -hmm. some, some sensitive parts in that old plant, which in the light of Fukushima need to be subs uh, substituted Immediately, we need mm -hmm. to invest in, in crucial parts which are security related. Was that here a topic? Was that a discussion? Is there some public knowledge the about what happened? What happened in the plant after Fukushima with the 20-year extension? The Nuclear Regulatory Commission is made up entirely of nuclear engineers from the nuclear industry. There are very few ex-nuclear regulatory commissioners who feel that it is their job to blow the whistle on unsafe nuclear plants. There are a couple. David Lockbaum is one. And there are, there are several good, uh, in, uh, not international, but national anti-nuclear agencies like N N 
EER and NEARS and Beyond Nuclear. Uh, I don't know if you've run into those, but if you haven't, we can give you links to those. They're all online. They're all yeah. online. There is, there is um, maybe corruption is too strong a word, I'm not sure. There is certainly a very cozy relationship between the government and the nuclear industry. And the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, which is supposed to be the watchdog, is not a watchdog. It's very interested in saving face for the for these their buddies who are running the nuclear power plants. So it's more of the self-deception that we have fostered since the Manhattan Project that that we're doing the right thing, and that 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 leak is nothing. You know, it's no problem. Everything is fine. It's okay. So no, there are there are activists who scream and yell. There are uh, uh, watershed groups in uh, along the Connecticut River who scream and yell about this stuff. The, in my humble opinion, the uh, Vermont Department of Public Health is also in the back pocket of the nuclear industry. Uh, it's a mess. And I'm sure in Germany that wouldn't be tolerated. I mean, in Germany, it seems to me, uh, people are very interested in orderly and appropriate and uh, let's get this right and let's be safe and you know we've seen what happens if we let things get out of hand we don't want to do that we we haven't learned those lessons here and just to answer your question uh, just recently uh, the chairman of the board of, of the Clean Regulatory Commission Mr. Jackson I think is the way to say it uh, he Yes, uh, he wanted to do more investigation about the safety of nuclear reactors. That was his goal. And he was tossed out by his fellow uh, members. They, they, he's no longer there. So uh, that just shows you what the politics of the whole thing are. That anybody who really wants to add, uh, investigate, really re investigate safety, is not welcome. And our government has prosecuted more whistleblowers than any other combined government in recent history. That's right. So, how safe is it to be a whistleblower? To, yeah, to tell the truth and be a whistleblower. Uh, just to add this again to get it clear for me, there is no public, uh, there's no public uh, reports on the market which says after Fukushima in Yankee, Vermont was done A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever. If it's, if, it's, if, it's, if it's a fact or if it's a fake, I don't know, but they didn't even try to, to convince the public opinion after that incident that they did some extra precautionary measures the Vermont, in, the, in the Yankee yeah. Vermont. There's a Vermont, I get this confused, but it's a Vermont Board of Public Service. Yeah. Yeah. That agency is currently doing hearings the NRC, some NRC commissioners, and re the NRC has two young people in residence at Vermont Yankee, that's required. Uh, they're like employees of the NRC. And they appeared with one of the commissioners at a hearing uh, by the Vermont Public Service Board in, I think, May. And the NRC explained that they are taking under advisement what to do about nuclear power plants like Vermont Yankee since Fukushima, and they've given themselves five years to figure it out. Okay. So, so just that I that I get it right as well. In the months or in the weeks or months after Fukushima blew up, uh, there was no, to your knowledge, no kind of stress test, kind of kind of thinking about we have the same machinery running here than we have in hey. uh, than they, they had in Japan maybe we have to uh, maybe we now know that this pipe was I'm not a technician, you should ask the public service this, this, board this, for the right answer this pipe pipe in Fukushima was the problem so we better uh, substitute this pipe we have here in Montpelier yeah. are you going back to Montpelier no, not really. Okay, but in, in Montpelier, you could call this person. <clears throat> the attorney for the Public Service Board is named Sarah Hoffman. She's very 
um, articulate. Mm -hmm. She appears to be very neutral, and I think she uh, is not neutral. She probably favors Yankee, but I don't know that. But she could fill you in on whether there was anything like that done, because mm -hmm. Am we I, well, we think you, we normally, we normally think things like this are done publicly. We yeah. think because uh, I don't think so, but a, I don't remember. A, no. Well, didn't the NRC no. man at the demo on, in May? Didn't he say something about? Oh yes, we have checked this and that and the other thing. But apparently, this is a very superficial thing. That they, whatever they did, we don't get the impression that it's you know front page news. You probably follow if you're covering this issue. Matthew Wald in the New York Times. Uh, you know, if if there was something big time yeah. in March or April or May of 2011, yeah. he, he would not. He would have run it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That would be the key source. Yeah. But you've you've all been in the U.S. You've you read the papers. Um, the story is there was a tsunami. Right. There was a problem. That was a natural catastrophe. You know, the the Japanese have more information today than we do, because they're, they're, the head of state resigned. You know, uh, there was a taking responsibility that it wasn't simply a natural disaster. If you surveyed people in this country about Fukushima, I dare say that the majority opinion is it was a natural disaster. It was terrible, but it's under control now because we don't read about it. We don't hear about it. We don't hear about the contaminated rice that's being exported here. We don't hear about the fish. We don't hear about that. You have to go to alternative sources. Do you have a, a copy of the uh, little folder from NFF? But no, what was the reaction actually in the U.S.? on the Chernobyl disaster 26 years ago. Because I, I, I know a little bit about the, dis the reaction in, in Western Germany, but I, I'm really, I'm just asking because well, I'm curious. Again, I think there was a news blackout. I really do. I don't think we have any idea what really happened there. Uh, luckily, just locally, uh, a woman has written something, a play called Voices of Chernobyl. And we were able to act it out in our yeah. town, where I live, which is Amherst, and several other towns around here. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, to bring this all up, and then we had a discussion afterwards, and so forth. But people had forgotten about it. They really had. I, I think you were all were much closer to it. And, and if anything was said, it was, oh, people, it was human error, and it will happen. 